Distribution, a rule of replacement. Like De Morgan's laws in commutativity and associativity, distribution is really two rules in one. We're going to look at both of them. The first says that P and, either Q or R, is logically equivalent to P and Q or P and R. The second law says that P or Q and R is logically equivalent to P or Q and P or R. If that sounds like a lot to take in, don't worry, it is, but we're going to go over it slowly and carefully. Like all rules of replacement, on the left side of the four dots and the right side are two statements that say the same thing, at least as far as logic is concerned. They have the same truth tables, which is to say they're true or false under all the same inputs. You can substitute either one in for the other in a whole line or a partial line, because these sentences are logical equivalents. Let's go ahead and take a look at how this rule works. First, we'll notice the P and in our first rule. On the other side, we've got Q or R. When we do distribution, we take that P and and we distribute it into Q or R, giving us P and Q or P and R. All of the same information, P, Q, and R, and all the same relationships, and and or, are represented just slightly differently. On the left, it tells us we know we've got P, and we also know we have a choice between Q and R. On the right, it says, knowing that, we have a choice between P and Q, or P and R, though we don't know which of those it is. You might use this rule, especially from right to left, if you want to use simplification and get P all by itself. The second rule, we're going to distribute P or into our conjunction, Q and R. We know we have a choice between both Q and R or P. If you have both, you have each of them separately. So we know we have two separate disjunctions, P or Q, as well as P or R. P or is distributed next to the Q, and it is also distributed next to the R. We don't know which we have between P and Q and R, but we know that if we have the choice between P on the one hand and Q and R together, then we have separate choices between P or Q, as well as between P or R. You might use this rule from left to right if you want to simplify and get P or Q all by itself, or you might move from right to left if you want to do a disjunctive syllogism and get P all by itself. We can see how this works with some very simple inputs, A, B, and C. On the left hand of the first rule, we have A and, either B or C. On the right hand, we get A and B, or B and C. Once again, A and, and our choice between B or C, is repeated on both sides, just in a different order. In the second rule, when we put in A for P, we get A or B and C. It's the logical equivalent of A or B and A or C. Once again, all the same information is preserved from one side to another, although the order has changed. We aren't going to do a more complicated inputs. It's just too much. This rule only applies to lines or partial lines with the exact format as above. And I'm not going to summarize that in plain English because it really doesn't help. This rule of replacement applies in both directions to any whole line or partial line. It cites one line and results in one line. The main operator and secondary operators must be AND and V only, and they must be different. It doesn't work with P and Q and R, or P or Q or R. That's what we have associativity for. The main operator and secondary operators switch from AND to V 
or from V to AND. Finally, a line with two operators, as our left sides, becomes a line with three operators, while a three operator line becomes a line with two. Believe it or not, some translations can help us make a lot of sense out of distribution. Imagine you go to a restaurant. Let's put in, I'll have a cheeseburger for P, for Q, I'll have a salad, and for R, I'll have fries. The first rule of distribution says, I'll have a cheeseburger and either salad or fries is the same thing as saying either I'll have a cheeseburger and salad or I'll have a cheeseburger and fries. You might very well think both of these different sentences in your head as you're deciding what side to get with your cheeseburger. Now the second is a little bit less normal, but I think it still works. Perhaps you're only medium hungry and you say either I'll have a cheeseburger or I'll have a salad and fries. Well, that would be logically equivalent to saying, I'll have a cheeseburger or salad, and I'll have a cheeseburger or fries. You might, after all, be balancing the taste and health qualities of cheeseburger versus salad, and the taste and health qualities of cheeseburger versus fries separately, and then think of cheeseburger versus your other combination together. We really do think in this way. Well, sometimes. Once again, we can see that AND and OR show up once each on the left side and twice and once on the right side. We can see AND and OR in the second rule as well. Taking a look at a truth table might also help us make sense of this. We're going to do this one rule at a time. Here's the first rule. P AND, either Q or R, is logically equivalent to P and Q or P and R. Both of these sentences are true only in the first three lines of the table. First of all, P has to be true, so the last four lines are out. Because P and one of Q or R also have to be true, our fourth line is out, since Q and R are both false in that line. Whichever way we state it, all of those truth conditions apply. Therefore, these are logical equivalences. How about the second rule of distribution? Well, either P or Q and R is the same as either P or Q and P or R. These sentences are true in the first five lines. Well, the first four lines we can take care of just knowing that P is true. That's enough for a disjunction to be true. The fourth line, the fifth line, P is false, but Q and R are both true. That's good enough to take care of our disjunction. In the last lines, not only is P false, but Q and R are not both true. So it doesn't work. They are false. Whether we say this idea, P or Q and R, or we say it, P or Q, and P or R, these are true and false under all the same conditions. So they are logical equivalents. Let's go ahead and take a look at some correct use of distribution in a proof. We're going to see both versions of this rule used at least once in this proof. Line one says P and Q or P and R. Well, that's a good candidate for distribution. Line two says either not P or T and not P or S. That's another good candidate for distribution. Therefore, T and S. Look for these patterns before doing simplification. If you're like me, you see an and and you do simplification almost right away. But if you do that, well, that'd be the long way around in this proof. Instead, we'll do distribution. We've taken P and out of our disjunction here. We've gone from P and Q or P and R to saying, well, we know we've got P. And also, we have either Q or R, even if we don't know which one we have. Since Q and R don't show up in line two or the conclusion, perhaps we won't end up caring about them at all. All the more reason to distribute out P. In the second line, 
we're pretty glad that we didn't do a simplification because now we can distribute out not p or giving us a choice between not p or t and s of course that's a good idea because we can simplify p from line 3 and we can double negate it now with disjunctive syllogism we can get to our conclusion t and s I'm not going to do any more proofs with this rule because this is already becoming a bit of an information overload. There's only one common error with distribution. Because it's so difficult, when people actually use it, they don't usually use it very wrong. The main error is simply not using it. This is a powerful rule that can save you time and really does express a way that human beings actually do some of our thinking. If you have to look back at the cheat sheet every time you use this rule, that's fine. I have to look back at it every time I make a new homework question involving this rule. There's no shame in that. It's a hard one to memorize, but it's an important one to be able to use effectively.